and we thank you for your spirit that we felt. We thank you for your spirit that we've seen at work here at Liberty in the past couple weeks and this morning. God, I know you have a new work, a new thing in store for us this morning. And God, we thank you that you have placed us in the United States of America. And this morning we are thankful for the men and women who have fought so that we could live in a land that's free. And God, we thank you for the privileges that you've given us, God, to carry your word and to come into your house. And this morning we bless your name. God, I pray that if there's someone here this morning who has a need in their life, Father, that they wouldn't leave without having that need met, whether that need be salvation, whether it be an encounter with you, whether it be um, just an, a need that they need to get settled at the cross. Father, I pray that you would work in this place, that you would move in this place this morning, and we give you all the glory. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Psalm 4610 this morning. Psalms 4610. Amen. While you're standing, I caught some of you halfway down there. <laughs> Psalm 4610. Uh, again, let me say this. You've heard this before, I know, but we, uh, we never coordinate anything with the praise team, praise band. They come over here and practice during the week and pray together, uh, mainly pray and then practice. Uh, and they do what the Lord feels like he has led them to do. And I don't really know what they're singing on Sunday mornings most of the time. Uh, but uh, the, the Lord himself, he, he aligns this service to be the way he wants it to be. I believe he's done that today very much so. I do want to mention again. Uh, last uh, Sunday night, how wonderful it was. Uh, boy, if you missed it, you missed quite a blessing. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be another one on the calendar. Uh, so when we have that, be sure you put that on your calendar. You plan on being here and attending. Uh, it was the Lord was here, uh, just his strong, strong presence. Uh, and the, the anointing was upon the praise team, praise band, and upon Lee. And uh, we are so, so thankful that well, we just got to be here and experience God's presence uh, as we did. did have uh, one young gentleman saved toward the end of the service or at the end of the service. And so we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. I want us to look at this verse. Now, let's be seated. Uh, today, uh, I, I like it when the Lord takes a verse and, and, uh, and he really... Um, he opens up the word to us and shows us maybe that all along the word, what we thought the word said is not what it says indeed. But let's look at the first part of this verse. There is this need from the text we're drawing from tonight, or this morning, there is this need in God's house today. So I want you to listen. You did not come without need this morning. Uh, maybe you're fortunate and favored and you have just uh, been walking in sunshine and in the light of his love and uh, maybe you have been walking on mountaintops today, uh, but many that are here this morning uh, have come with need in their life. Yes, uh, you have on your Sunday's best. Yes, you're driving a, a, a vehicle. You've washed it, got it ready for Sunday, uh, but still you have this deep-seated need in your heart. The Bible says this in verse 10, and you're, you know this passage of Scripture, particularly this one verse, that's what I want to look at, or this one phrase I want us to look at. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. You may be seated, and may God add the blessings uh, to the reading uh, of his word. So certainly, we, we see that on refrigerator magnets, we see it on bumper stickers, it's in our devotionals. Uh, we, we see that little phrase many, many places. We often quote it quite possibly that we need to be still and know uh, that he is God. Uh, and it is a great, great truth in a time when we don't know what it is like to be still. We always have some kind of noise in our life. Whether it's the busyness of the day, uh, a preacher friend of mine was talking to me one time about church attendance and he was lamenting how that summertime had rolled around at, uh, at that time of our conversation and he was, he was lamenting about how that his attendance had dropped off so bad because once it becomes summer, everybody becomes so busy and they just kind of stop coming to church through the summer months. 
and because of activities and he was talking about that and we were talking about how busy people's lives are and, and he made a great statement. He said, you know, we, well, we are as busy as we have made ourselves or allow ourselves to be. And that is true. That's, that's very, very true. And so in a time when we just are surrounded by so much noise, maybe you're one of those people who, who you walk through the house, as soon as you get home today, you'll go through the house and grab a remote control and turn the TV on and then lay the remote down and leave the room. And you won't even come back to that TV for a little while. You have to have noise. Uh, or you turn the radio on. And listen, I'm all for listening to the radio driving down the road when there's music and songs playing. Uh, but I hate those commercials that are in between every song. And I, when that, those come on, I turn it down. Maybe you just keep it turned up and let the, the advertisements and the commercials just blare on your, your radio. But we live in a day and a time when we just don't know how to get still and be quiet. We're always moving, always on the go, always act full of activity. Uh, but... And, this, and that's certainly a truth we could draw from this passage. But uh, as I began to study this verse and to try to, to figure out, I said, Lord, what does it really mean to be still and know that I am God? And so one of the first things we have to do is, is we have to keep the text in context. One of the things you cannot do in God's Word, you cannot get in God's Word and pull a random verse out of the Bible and apply it to your life. Not You cannot do it accurately nor biblically. So we can't go just grab a verse somewhere because it fits and it sounds good. We have to see in what context was it written. And in this psalm, we see a psalm written like many of our psalms are written. Many of our psalms are written uh, in such a fashion to where the very first verse has the punch of the text and the, the thrust and the meaning of the psalm. And then the last verse comes in line with that and it brings back that thrust and that main meaning of God's word. Uh, and so, so, so follow with me. So in many of the psalms are written where right off the get-go, verse 1, you see the meaning of the psalm, and then the psalm is written, uh, and then at the end of the psalm, they, the psalmist comes to a conclusion, and he brings that thrust right back to us so we can really get a grip on what God's trying to say. And we've got to do that with this psalm. At least uh, put those verses on the screen. So here's verse 1 of Psalm 46. Here's what the Bible says. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. All right, so there's your title right there. There's what the psalmist wants you to know and understand. Whatever else he says in this psalm, he's simply backing up this initial statement where he has made the main thing the main thing and the main point the main point, and it is this. He is a refuge and strength to us, a very present help in trouble. Notice the tense of the verb there. God is our refuge. He is, not he used to be, uh, not he can be, or he's going to be, or he might be, or you can hope that he will be, but the tense is a present tense. God is our refuge and strength. And that means he is today, here, right now, on Sunday morning, for you. But he's a very present help in trouble. At least I'm going to really... I'm going to make you work back there today. Put the last verse on there. And so the Bible says this, the very last verse of this psalm, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Ties right back into verse 1. Uh, and so, uh, Elise, I'm going to ask you, if you will, to, uh, to go back uh, to the first verse again. We're going to juggle around here a little bit. Uh, and so I want you to look at this verse, what the Bible says. God is our refuge and strength. A little has to be said right there. We know what that means. We know that means he, we can run to him. He will hide us, literally, uh, and that uh, he will strengthen us. Uh, but he's a very present help uh, in trouble. Uh, that word present there, literally, uh, it means you can find him. 
Uh, if I say that I am present in my office, that means that you can come to my office and you will find me in my office. Well, that word present there, the focus is really on the fact that God is not some God who's hid behind a cloud somewhere. He's not some God that you can never really know or, or talk to or understand, uh, but that he can be found if you are looking for him today. You'll find him. A very present help in trouble. Now watch this, because this, this, is where, this is where it applies to you today and to me. That word trouble there, we all, we all know what that means, but maybe we need to clarify it for a snowflake generation that might be listening on the internet today. That word trouble there, what it means is, is it means anguish of soul. It means distress deep down inside of you. Now that'll put things in perspective because there's some people think they've had a bad day if they wake up and it's raining outside. They think life has gone sour and, and things have turned wrong if somebody doesn't wish them a happy birthday text on their birthday. Uh, they just can't get over it if somebody goes by, walks by them and doesn't shake their hand or ask how they're doing today. We have a generation like that today. They, they get their feelings so easily hurt and they think that life is, will never be the same if they wake up and there's a flat tire on their car uh, in the driveway. I, I'm not talking about all of that because here's the thing. If you e have ever had distress or anguish of soul... Uh, then you look on those other things as but just a light thing. You don't even look upon those other things. It's just another day and the sun is still going to shine and you're still going to walk in God's favor and God's goodness and God's blessing. Uh, but those things are far removed from deep inner anguish of soul and heart where you have distress deep down inside of you. And so what the psalmist is dealing with here, he really... Verse 1, where, where he is using this literary style that makes the main point in that first verse. He is really not beating around the bush. He's really not wasting time nor words. There's only 11 verses in this psalm. But he gets right to it and he wants to deal with people who have anguish in their heart who have distress down deep inside their soul. And I want to be honest and just very plain with you today. We, we do live in, a, we live in very difficult days. We, I believe we live in the last days. And I believe, uh, of course, heaven knows that, uh, but I believe the devil knows that too. The enemy knows that. Uh, and uh, God's people today, I see them enduring more and more and bearing more and more and carrying more and more in their day-to-day -day life. God's people are more troubled today than any other time in history, I believe. And there's many reasons for that, and I'm not here to explain the reasons. I'm just here to let you know that if you have deep anguish of soul, uh, if you have that distress that's deep down inside of you, that trouble... Uh, that won't give you rest because you can't eat your way through it. You can't sleep your way through it. It takes your appetite. Uh, it takes your health. Uh, it takes your sleep. It takes your rest. And it takes your peace. So if you're here this morning and, and, uh, and, and you have that deep anguish of soul, that deep uh, inner turmoil, that deep inner stress, then, friend, listen, this psalmist is writing to you and I. He's speaking to, us, to, speaking to us this morning. If you'll think in your mind already to the songs that was just sung, the words that's been on this screen, then you're going to know that God brought you here for a reason today. That when you woke up this morning, you may have thought nobody else understood you or knew where you were at or even cared about you, but you need to know that God was orchestrating early in this week for this day, for you to be here. Amen. God is our refuge, our strength, a very present help in trouble. He can be found if you want to find refuge in him today. There'll never be a, a busy signal on his phone. There'll never be a sign on the door that says, be back after lunch, got other troubles, other worries. No, but he's very present for you. 
You say, you don't even know what I'm going through. You don't even understand. You don't, you could not possibly understand. And I want you to know uh, that I've been around people enough to where I will readily admit you're exactly right. And I would tell you that if you wept on my shoulder after church in my office. I would tell you, I am so sorry. There's no way I can understand the pain that you're going through, the heartache you're enduring, and the stress that you're bearing. And I could not possibly know because I'm not in that, in your situation right now. But. I know a God who is our refuge and strength and a very present help right this moment in all of your distress and all of your anguish. So at least, if you will, put verse 10 back up there. So verse 10 says this. Verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. And so I thought a lot about, well, how do, you, how do you be still? Do you just turn the TV off? Do you turn the radio off? Do I go sit cross-legged in, 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 in my sunroom and, uh, uh, you know, meditate? Well, how, how do I do this? What does this look like? What's the picture of being still? If he is my refuge, if he's a high place that I could run to, that I can find shelter, that I can find help, uh, and he's going to help me, he's promised he would right now, here today, so, so how do I approach this? What gets me there? What does being still look like? Does it mean no radio for a week, no TV for a week, uh, no Facebook for a week? What, does, what, does, what is this picture? And it comes to find out when you study that, um, that Hebrew word for still, it really has very little to do with being motionless or being quiet or removing yourself from distractions, though all of that's good. All of that is so good. But, but in this verse, that's not what it means. In fact, uh, all throughout the Bible where we find this same word used, it is seldom used, it is seldom translated still as it is right here. And girls, I'm going to ask you to come because we're just we're taking the word. I, I don't we're just taking the word and expounding on it. That, that really, the sermon is in the text, not from my lips or from my notebook. And, and so that word "still" here's what it means when it's that Hebrew same Hebrew word is used all throughout the Old Testament. Uh, it means to slacken or to droop. Uh, literally, the image is of, of someone standing strong, somebody standing firm, somebody standing courageous. That's one of the, actually, definitions of that word is to lose courage. Somebody standing in boldness, and then to be still means they, they weaken, they grow slack. Really, really the imagery there and, and one of the one of the ways that Hebrew word is used is to faint so, so you see do you see the image there the picture yes do not get me wrong yes being still as we know the word is wonderful we could apply it in this text it's wonderful if we are in deep anguish of soul if we are, have trouble deep within us, it's, it would be a great thing if you'd get alone somewhere with God and just, and just be in his quietness. Turn off the podcast, turn off the, your favorite preacher, turn off the music, turn off everything and just get alone. And be, Yes, that's a wonderful thing. God will move and you'll sense him and hear him and, and know him, yes. But in this text, the picture is, is, is of someone fainting. Someone just drooping. Can I really just talk real plain right here and tell you kind of what I got in my mind as I'm seeing this picture? What I see when I see the picture of this word, and I've studied the definition uh, over and over this morning, but what I really see is this, is that individual in deep anguish of soul. I mean disturbed deep within them, growing so weak that you just fall before the Lord. That you just lay down before the Lord. That you just collapse before Him. And here's what the Bible says when you and I do that. Be still and, what have, and know that I am God. That word know, it means to experience. It has nothing to do with an intellectual knowledge. 
but it has everything to do with knowing by experience that he is God. Listen, you can tell me all day long about what it's like to catch a big fish out of a certain lake. And to be quite honest, I really don't want to hear your stories. Take me there and let me experience that for myself. Uh, you can tell me all day long what it's like to uh, stand and view the valley of lights in Yosemite, but that, that really doesn't mean a lot to me. You can declare it's, it's grander and how spectacular it is, but take me there and let me stand and let me see that, uh, that view of God's creation for myself. I want to experience it. And so you can tell me all day long about how God's helped you in all of your trouble, and that's great, and that's fine, and I'm, I'm glad for you, and I'm thankful for you, but when I'm in my trouble, what I really want, I need to experience it myself. And so if you will, and I'm hung on this, and I hope I always stay, but if you will, just take this as a promise from God's Word to you on this Sunday morning. And the promise is this, is that if you will stoop or slacken or get weak before him today, the promise is you will experience the truth that he is God and that he is a refuge and that you can experience him hiding you in the cleft of the rock. You can experience him being that very present hell. You can experience what it's like to find him in all of your troubles. That's a promise from God's word. Be still. Get weak before him. Slacken yourself. Grow feeble. Faint, if you will. And fall before him. And find the promise of his word that you will experience and know by experience that he is God and he is a help for you in all of our trouble. Oh my goodness. The thing I see missing in our churches today, and I, and, I, and I am not knocking praise and worship, don't get me wrong, but we come in and we, so worship, we worship praise and worship to such an extent that we forget that there's hurting people sitting around us. There's people that need the Lord. No, not to be saved because they are saved. They're a child of God. But life has brought to them anguish of soul and anguish of heart and they're, they're hurting deep down inside of themselves. And, and so and we, we carry on business as church and we want everybody to be happy, clappy and, and, and all of that and then we'll just dismiss and send them out and expect everybody to stay lifted by that lifting moment. But we've never dealt with the pain that's deep down inside of their soul. Man, listen, I'm telling you right now, there's some folks hurting today. I've been thinking all day yesterday, or last two days really, about a young lady I know who, she's only about 14 I think, and she's had cancer, and now they've discovered she has another kind of cancer on top of it. And I've been thinking about that mom and that daddy, that's all I've been thinking about, how every day they're waking up knowing that their little girl has this diagnosis. And I've thought about how their heart's breaking and how they've got anguish deep inside of their soul. Oh yeah, maybe they have an unshakable faith, I know. But it doesn't stop the hurting. And folks, listen, I want you to know this promise right here that if you lay yourself before the Lord, He's not going to deny you. But you're going to find out you're going to find out that by experiencing it yourself that he'll be your help. He'll be your refuge. He'll wrap you up. He'll take you in. When you were saved, you need to understand something. He didn't save you to leave you on your own. He didn't save you to, to let you figure it all out. He didn't save you so in hard times you could work through it. But when you give your life to him, it then becomes his life. And so he's taking care of you. You're his responsibility. You're in his care. He loves you that much. 
And for those of you who would resist the Spirit today, and listen, after the, after the, uh, the praise team stu- stood and sung and said what they've stu- sung and said, and you've seen the words on the screen, how could you resist or deny what God's trying to do in your own heart and in your own life today? But listen, the Word says this. When I am weak, then he is strong. What the church needs today is not a bunch of strong believers who have it all together. What the world, what the church needs today is some believers who are weak and can't make it without him so that he can be strong in our lives. Then we can leave this church strong to win the world, to witness to the world. And so you today in all of your weakness, in all of your brokenness, That imagery in that word, be still, it literally also means somebody who's got hands raised strong. But then they grow weak. And they let down. It'll be all right this morning if you left your pew in the back of the church. If you left your pew in the middle of the church. Or over on the left side or the right side. And you just come to this altar and you just just laid your hands down. And just confess, Lord, I can't anymore. I'm unable, I'm weak, I'm tired, I'm tried. My soul is weary. And Lord, I just need some rest in you. I need some strength from you. And I need to know, I don't want to hear somebody else's stories. But Lord, I need to know myself. That you are God. That word God there, by the way, it's also in the plural. My English teacher would love that I'm about to explain this to you. It's in the plural. It does not mean, it's not singular. It doesn't mean one. Uh, But what it means is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Be still. Get weak. Slink slumber down let your hands fall down before him and you'll find out from experience just who God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit is in your life no better place can you come today and fall before than a triune God a God in three persons to surround you to wrap you up to take you to strengthen you to lead you to guide you to bring rest to a weary soul I know many of you, you'll leave this church today and you'll go home and take a big Sunday afternoon nap. No sin against that. I'm sure it's in God's Word somewhere. If we look, study, and find it, it's got to be there. There's nothing wrong with it. But I want to tell you what you need more than that today is you need some rest for your soul. You can't bear this alone. You can only go so far. It'll be the ruin of you and the breaking of you if you try to do it on your own or if you just try to shun off the help that God's trying to offer you. But he's extending his grace today through song and his word. And say, if you'll come and just be weak, I'll prove myself strong in your life. He loves you just that much. They're about to sing a song. And when I have you stand before they sing that first word, I want you to make your move when you come. Are you ready? Because he's ready. He's waiting on you. Stand.